what we don't realize is that maybe 10 years from now, this technology that we've come to rely on to run our health services, police, government, legal systems, even our daily lives, is suddenly in control of just a couple of companies that are deciding who gets to use it, how much it costs, um, and what it can do. My name is Mike Cook, and I do research into artificial intelligence and its applications to creativity and game design. So you can think of AI as like a, a big toolbox of techniques. Um, and different tools are used for different problems. Some tools um, are good when the problem doesn't have a known solution. So sometimes we don't really know what we're looking for. This is actually very true in creative areas. If you have a problem that requires you to spot patterns in data and then think about those patterns applied to new data, well, that might be perfect for something like language translation. But if you want to know for sure that something is true, if you want to prove something about a system to make sure that it's safe, to make sure that a medical system isn't going to hurt anyone, for example, you might want to use something like automation theorem proving. Um, and in our toolbox, some tools are more exciting than others, and that's why everyone's really excited about machine learning. That's kind of our electric power tool um, of the moment. And the problem with that is that sometimes that can be all you focus on. Now we think all AI is machine learning. Um, but in reality, machine learning is just one segment of that. And within machine learning, there's even more specialized areas. So you might have come across the phrase LLM, or large language model. So a very specific kind of machine learning system trained to reproduce text. Um, but of course, that's just one small part of a small part of a much bigger um, collection of techniques called artificial intelligence. The kinds of AI techniques that we've developed over the last 10 years, things like neural networks and, and large language models, they are a kind of problem where if you put more money in, you buy more servers, you buy more computers, you, you buy more data, um, you actually find that you get much, much faster and much better results. And what we've seen as a result of that is that a few companies have been able to use disproportionate levels of investment to kind of seize control of the marketplace, of the messaging that we see in the newspapers, um, and in some cases, their influence over things like governments or organizations like the NHS. Although these companies often portray themselves as these public research institutions that have labs and people looking out for the future of humanity, ultimately their, their actual purpose is to make money at the end of the day. And that's why we need as many people as possible to be involved in the design, the development, and the discussions around AI to make sure that everyone is involved in shaping the future, not just the people who stand to profit from it. when we hear about new AI systems. They're often presented as if they're discovered laws of nature or something like that. But really, these new AI systems that we hear about are products, um, and that means that we should treat them like products. So if we think about it like medicine, uh, if a new drug came out and it hadn't been tested, we didn't know if it was safe, uh, we didn't know what the long-term effects of using it were, um, we might ask questions about it before we actually started using it. Um, but when we look at AI systems, none of us ask those questions. Governments aren't checking. Um, we don't really know if most of these technologies are safe to use or what the impact on our society will be in the long Long term. And that's really dangerous because these technologies are increasingly integrated into our lives. They're being folded into the justice system, they're being folded into the health system. And that means they're making decisions about people's lives without us really knowing whether they're safe and whether we're particularly happy having them there. It's easy when we see a new technology like AI to think that it's too complicated for us to understand and as a result we're not allowed to have an opinion on it until we understand it. Um, but that's just not the case. Um, I don't know anything about how to build a nuclear power station or how to lay a railway line from here to Manchester, but I'm still allowed to have an opinion on how it happens, how it affects my life and how it affects my children's lives. And similarly, even though we're told all the time that AI is a very complicated and scary new technology, that doesn't mean that we can't find out a little bit about it, form our own opinions, and, and tell people, tell governments, tell companies how we want it to be done. Of course, it's easy for us to say that people should find out more about AI, but the question is, who is going to help them? You know, who's going to provide ways to get over that misinformation? Um, and I think that's one place that universities have a really important role. So places like King's can provide resources and outreach that help people get over some of their fears, answer some of their questions, and also give them some optimism about the things that are exciting about the future. But other groups have responsibilities as well, I think. And I think governments do need to take a more active role, not just in thinking about things like regulation, but also in thinking about how to communicate and educate the population so that they feel safe, so that they feel confident about the future that's being built around them. 
So what should the future look like when it comes to AI? Often we think about science as a linear path of discovery after discovery after discovery. But that's not how it works. It has many branches, many different choices and directions we can go down. And the people that should be choosing which ones that we take are all of us. It's not just a few people that, that run companies or make decisions high up in government. So we want to build a more transparent future for AI. And what that might mean is that we need to change how we think about AI a bit, maybe change how we discuss AI with one another and in the press and probably also how we build AI as well. And in particular, we may not want to use these big data-hungry, energy-hungry uh, models for every single problem we come across. Instead, we should look to build a future where we use the right tools for the right problem and something where the public can gain confidence. Because if you understand how something works, then you feel safer around it, you feel more confident using it, and you're able to think about what it can mean for your own future too.